Hey guys, this is Mark with CB Performance. Today we're going to be going over the software for the Gen 4 EFI. We're going to be getting timing set, fuel pressure set, going over some of the settings inside the software. That way you can get your engine started and get it idling on its own. And uh, let's roll right into the software. You should have your software open by now. Let it read the calibration. So first things first, we want to check to make sure that all of our sensors are reading properly. If you do have any errors, you're, they're going to be on the screen here on the right side. You'll have a little red box that says air temp or cylinder head temp or if you don't have a sensor plugged in, it'll tell you. Um, what we're going to do first before we make any changes to the software is we're going to save a base file. So we're going to go up here to file and then come down to save master cal file. This will bring up a, a window. You give it a name. Uh, this is our test engine so I'll just put test engine and click on save. So now that we've saved the file we can go in to start calibrating the throttle position sensor, setting fuel pressure, stuff like that. So next up we're going to set the, get the calibration of the TPS set. Um, to do this we'll go up to here to the setup file. Come down here where it says calibrate TPS. It's a simple window. It's going to calibrate minimum voltage and maximum voltage. And you'll do that by releasing the throttle and pressing the minimum button. Once, once it turns green, it's saved that calibration. Next, we'll give it wide open throttle and hit and hold it and click on the max button. That should calibrate the maximum. So we're going to double check our work here. I'm still holding the throttle wide open and it shows 100%. If I let go of the throttle, it comes down to 0%. So now that we know, our TPS is calibrated. Next up, we're going to set our fuel pressure. An easy way to do this without having to start the engine is also a good way to check for fuel leaks without starting the engine. We're going to come up here to setup, come down to output test, and here we have the ability to toggle the fuel pump relay on and off. So I'm going to click it on. You should hear your fuel pump running if everything's correct. This will give you an opportunity to go out to the engine and check for fuel leaks. So on here, if you have the fuel pressure sensor hooked up, you should see your fuel pressure. You want to set it free flow without the engine running to 43 to 45 pounds. Here we have ours set to 41. It's what this engine likes, so that's what we're going to give. If the regulator is out of whack, you can go out to the regulator itself. There's a little screw terminal on it. You can turn it in to increase fuel pressure, out to decrease fuel pressure. Once we have it set to that 43 to 45 pounds, we'll come back to the computer and turn the fuel pump relay off. And the fuel pump should stop working. Also a good opportunity to check to make sure your wiring's right. That's pretty much our pre-checklist for starting the engine. Now you can go ahead and start the engine if everything's tight and hopefully with the base file it should run. So now we're going to check our ignition timing with the crank trigger ignition system. Go to your software, open the spark table, get the idle cell value, which in this case is 15 degrees, go out to the engine and check your timing. Our timing is at 14 degrees, so let's go back to the software and adjust it. Go to setup, open up the spark tab, and we're going to go to the high-low timing trigger. To add timing, we'll do 101. That adds one degree. To take away timing, we'll do 99. That would take away one degree. So we need to add one degree, so let's put it back in 101 and hit send. Go back out to the engine and verify that the change is made at the end. Timing looks good, so we're all done with our setting our idle timing. So now we're going to check our high-end timing. Open up the spark table and see what the value is at the high RPM, low load. In this case, it's 37 degrees. Go out to the engine, hook up your timing light, and rev the engine up to 3,3500 RPM, and check your timing. If the timing doesn't match, we're going to go back to the software, 
we're going to go to setup and then spark and adjust the high rpm trim now this works a little different than the low rpm trim is it's more of a, a delay so 95 would lower the timing 130 would add timing you just kind of have to play with it to see what the engine responds to hit send after you make a change and then go back out and verify your settings again rev the engine back up if everything looks good you're all done you've set the timing with the crank trigger ignition system now we're going to check our timing if you have a distributor based timing control so go to edit spark table see what your timing is in an idle cell in this case it's 15 degrees go out to the engine hook up your timing light and see what the timing is if the timing doesn't match what the dashboard says loosen up the distributor clamp and rotate the distributor until you get your timing to match get it set to 15 degrees tighten the clamp and verify it with the timing light and you're good so now we're going to check our high end timing. Open up the spark table and see what the value is at high RPM and low load. In this case it's 37 degrees. Go out to your engine and hook up a timing light. Now you're going to rev the engine up to 3,3500 RPM to get that timing value. If the timing value doesn't match, we're going to go back to the software, go to setup, spark, high RPM trim. Again, this is a delay more than an actual timing value. So we have a value of 650 here. To raise the timing, we'll put in a value of 700. To lower the timing, we'll put in a value of 600. In this case, we need to add timing. So we'll put 700 hit send, go out back out to the engine and verify. It may take a couple tries, but once it's done, it's done. So now we're going to go out to the engine and set our idle speed. Start by loosening up the throttle cable. Next, go over to one of the arms and loosen up the heim joint. Place your sink tool on top of the throttle body and get a value on one side. Here you can see we're just above the 3 mark. Next move it over to the other throttle body and compare. You want these as evenly as possible. To even them out, use the idle screws on the throttle body to adjust. You also want to make sure that the idle RPM matches what you want. You want about 950 to 1000 RPM. Do it a couple times to make sure everything's in sync and everything looks good. Put your heim joint back on. Now we're going to make sure that both arms are pulling at the same rate. Adjust the rod to where they pull the same amount. Also that they're not holding the throttle body open on either side. If everything looks good, tighten everything back down and double check your work. timing set, we're going to come back to the dashboard and get our idle air fuel ratio set. To do this, we'll go to the edit and then open up the fuel table. 
The light for the idle cell should be lit up at this point with the engine idling. Here we have a value of 5300, which is a little high, but we'll, uh, we'll adjust it down since our air flow ratio, our target here is 13.5, and we're closer to 13.3, so we'll adjust this a little bit. So let's start with a value of 5000 and hit the send button. So that's pretty close. It's acceptable enough that air fuel ratio is going to move around a little bit, but that we're not worried, too worried about that. As long as the engine's idling smooth, the vacuum's not all over the place, and the idle RPM didn't change much, that's all we need to do. Well, that wraps up this video. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe to our page, and we'll see you next time.